Looking at Nitro first, to start off with, we've got a bit of a... New <laughs> promo, um, NWO just set out. Um, we have the president of Turner Sports coming out with NWO coming out in... NWO comes out in a stretch Hummer. That looks like a tank though. <laughs> According to them, like, what the fuck kind of tank is that? Definitely a stretch Hummer. Either way, uh, and then Harvey Schiller comes out after them, which is hilarious that he comes in in a normal limo behind them. <laughs> like they're like, we're parking here, brother. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> he comes out too and walks behind him. I totally thought they were gonna talk to each other, and he's gonna be like, I fucking hate all you guys. <laughs> but none of that. But uh, but that's okay. We hop over to our first match. Uh, we have the ever um, enchanting Hugh Morris. Get it? <laughs> and Conan uh, with the K. Get it? Versus <laughs> Jeff Jarrett and Mongo. The two, the apparently the only two wrestlers that are on the team of the four horsemen that can actually compete, <laughs> which is really the five horsemen. Yeah, it's it's the firesmen, <laughs> <laughs> not the forestmen. So yeah, definitely uh, definitely interesting here. Um, we got Jeff Jarrett and Hugh Morris starting off. Of course, um, a little bit of back and forth, nothing too complex. Hugh Morris gets the mockery on JJ. It, yeah, he does a little, I fucking hate this guy, <laughs> or whatever, which, you know, it's good. So Someone needs to mock his dance every now and again and let him, bring him back down to earth, you know? Yeah. Especially with those stupid fucking things he's got on him, <laughs> whatever. A uh, public enemy comes out and tries to grab the briefcase from, from Deborah. Yeah. From Deborah. Deborah. I uh, want to point out at this point, Mongo is tagged in uh, wrestling and Jeff is out. Um, for whatever reason, Jeff is, they haven't even explicitly explained it yet, in love with Deborah, I guess. It's like a mutual love. They look like they're related, to be honest. But <laughs> whatever. Um, he comes out to defend her honor. And why was Public Enemy here? And to protect that briefcase. That's where all the money's at. That's where all the contracts are. That's where all his Chicago Bears memorabilia is. <laughs> and man, does it weigh a ton. Because when that bitch slings back, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett slings that shit back, hits Mongo right in the head. He was bleeding. <laughs> Legit bleeding. That was a hard way, folks. Yeah, which is uh, surprising considering. You know, especially if you're looking at Mongo. He's not the kind of guy I would go, yeah, he's going to bleed. <laughs> like, he's like, I got to preserve my head or whatever the case is. But he gets smacked up real good, knocked out, and at that point the pin comes in um, with, I think, uh, Conan pinned him. Uh, one of them. One of them. One they of all guys. look alike. So anyway, yeah, and this leads to a little bit of con controversy. Yeah. Um, with the four horsemen coming out, um, looking like dads, really. <laughs> Different era dads uh, coming out. Arn Anderson's pissed off. What Arn era dad uh, does Ric Flair look like he is? 80s, 70s. 70s, 70s dad? dad? 70s dad. Like, he's a businessman. I just got done earning this bread, like... Something like that. Or death of a salesman, dad. Except his goats, his coat's on. Uh, <laughs> Arn Anderson, first to lay in to Jeff Jarrett. Don't make me a liar! You know, so did, did we? Didn't we leave this drama in, in the West Coast? He didn't say that. He threw up a gang sign, and it was just like, Arn, too far, man. I know how to do blood. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> you better not. Anyway, so, um, and then, of course, Jeff Jarrett tries to defend himself, and he's like, hey, hold on. Come on, Rick. <laughs> you know what's up, right, Rick? <laughs> Which particularly perturbs Rick. Yeah. I ain't Rick here. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the nature boy. He's Rick right now. Yeah. Uh, I miss... I, maybe you don't, but I miss having Ric Flair do his woo promo stuff. He um, hasn't done it the last couple of nights. I was I was raised on it, so <laughs> every now and again it just rings in my ear like tinnitus or uh, whatever it's called, tinnitus. <laughs> just here, woo! Tinnitro. <laughs> oh, there we go. And then we're back. <laughs> uh, so anyway, match ends at that point. They're all trying to get on the same page. Debra pro protecting Jeff Jarrett, of course, and... Nothing really gets resolved at that point. They just go, we're all upset at each other in two weeks. <laughs> it's basically the same thing that it was before the match at um, the pay-per-view. So we got nowhere. It's just that now they're on the same team. And they're trying to make it work. 
Yeah. Uh, next up, we get DDP versus the Jobber. I think his name was Thorn. They Thorn. Said, okay. Yeah, somewhere in there, they were like, "And Thorn." Anyway, <laughs> like, he didn't get an entrance, and they barely talked about him. He was already in the stage. Like, just, just, just get in the fucking stage. Uh, it was, it was pretty. It was an okay match. Um, the only thing I have is a reversal into a diamond cutter. Yeah, DDP for this was definitely playing up for the audience. Uh, when he's coming out, and he's humping shit and whatnot, and humping <laughs> shit. <laughs> like a sexual <laughs> tyrannosaur he is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he does get a little promo time. He says, Savage has snapped. He's talking about Randy Savage joining the NWO. And then he says, snap into this. <clears throat> you can't snap into diamonds. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> so he's not going to take... Go take him. Go take him. But I like that. That was like a cool little, because obviously. Seven uh, Slim Jim. Seven Slim Jim. That was part of the, the reason he went over to WCW. <laughs> Seven <Samuel> Slim Jim! <laughs> <laughs> That's why I never liked Macho, because I would see him every fucking day. <laughs> it's like we're not even wrestling in these here. <laughs> uh, next batch we got up is uh, Juventud uh, Guerrero. Guerrero. Mm -hmm. Versus Ray Mendoza. Now, I don't know about you, but Ray Mendoza is definitely. He's definitely a popular wrestler. <laughs> a lot of people know him. When I, people... when I think of awesome luchador action, I think of Ray Mendoza. Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> it's a bad match. Yeah, I, I don't think they ever really kicked it into like a high gear. Yeah. Ray did a, or sorry, Hooventude did a, <laughs> Hoovy, Hoovy. did a suicide dive through the ropes. Th yeah, through, it's, it's sort of weird. I, I'm, I was bitching about it the entire time, <laughs> but the way he does it. You know, I do it on the indies a lot. Okay, and that's fine. If it makes sense, do it. But, so we've got Ray Mendoza position literally just like outside the ring, looking straight at the ring. If you're inside the ring and you did a suicide dive, you're set. Who and who goes, fuck that. I'm going to be outside of the ring, but on the apron on the left side, and I'm going to dive through that rope, and then this series of ropes, and then I'm going to hit you. Yeah, it doesn't really make it. It doesn't fucking sense. translate. So, I mean, if, if, if he was, like, at a weird angle, he's like, bro, i got to hit it like this. Do yeah, it. yeah. Do it. But just seemed a little bit weird to me. Um, there was definitely a lack of... Chemistry. Um, yeah, chemistry between the two wrestlers. Things felt a little bit off, of course. Um, and then we end it with a 450 splash. Which to the knees. To the knees. <laughs> Ray's weakest part in his body. Yeah. Critical hit. <laughs> and of course it's worth mentioning Ray Mendoza because there's a really great uh, uh, Lucha wrestler named Ray Mysterio Jr. <laughs> Lucha <don't>... Ray thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dungeon of Doom interrupts. Uh, not for a match, they just kind of interrupt commentary. It's Jimmy Hart, Jacqueline, and Kevin Sullivan. Of course, uh, Jacqueline and Kevin Sullivan got injured at the last pay-per-view mm -hmm. and have been out of commission since, so we're, this is the first time we're seeing them back. Uh, Jacqueline can beat any man except for Kevin Sullivan. Jacqueline can't beat her fucking top <laughs> because she kept almost falling out of it. Never wear that shit again. Or conversely, continue to wear that shit. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, it was a weird sort of promo. Jimmy Hart's coming on first talking about, we're back in town, baby. And then Kelvin, Kevin Sullivan, probably fully aware of the divorce at this point. <laughs> it's like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and when he says that they're too legit to quit, seems to be their catchphrase. And it's starting to get fucking annoying. Going to our next match, everyone's favorite divorcee <laughs> versus Mike Enos. What a shitty fucking name. Mike Enos. Mike Enos. Mike Enos? I guess. Is I guess it's supposed to, to sound like my penis. Mike Enos. No. I mean, like, if that's what they're going for, that's way off. It is off. So, <laughs> just like you are. <laughs> Fuck that. Either way. Uh, <laughs> you, you do this. <laughs> because you're positive about it. I was negative. <laughs> Uh, Mike Eno Enos does a cool spin. <laughs> spin a Rudy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he just tries to punch at Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko's tearing the shit out of him. That's basically the story of this match. Is Dean Malenko merciless? Because he's like heel now. Yeah. And he's mercilessly beating the shit out of Mike Enos. And Enos, at one point, he gets beaten up and does like a delirious like punch. But he doesn't hit anybody and just spins around. 
I wrote Dean choking bitches <laughs> because <laughs> let's be honest, that's his that's his new signature at this point. Mm. Divorce choke. <laughs> <laughs> you want the kids? <laughs> uh, at what point? Dean Malenko puts Mike Enos's leg over the barricade yeah. and then like kicks it real hard and that, that pretty much sets up the match for him working on his leg. Yeah. And brings him back into the ring. I thought it was going to be a timeout the way he's just like, oh my leg. Yeah. Brings him back into the ring, continuously working the leg. Really just trying to cripple this person. Um, but Dean just wins with the roll up. I kind of thought that was a heatless way to end this match. Yeah. It's like... He should have got a submission off of that leg. Yeah, hit a submission or like... I think get disqualified for just beating the living tar out of the guy. Yeah, make him dangerous for any wrestler. And it's just like, oh my god. I think that would be better. But instead we just get a roll-up, which is like a desperation kind of win. Yeah. Which he was not desperate. <laughs> but I'll tell you what he was. Mad at Eddie. He gets a promo immediately after the match and is just like, you know what, Eddie? That's just a small sample of what I'm going to do to you or what I can do to you and all that shit. For whatever reason, he thinks he's being... He's, he is the WCW Bret Hart right now. Yes. He is being a absolute, like, I'm getting pissed off about this shit. And he's a technical wrestler. And then he's just... Well, it's not misunderstanding. Austin is fucking everywhere on WWF. We'll get to that. But anyway... Yeah, we, we we get that back and forth at that point and sort of move on from there. We jump over to Eric Bischoff with Mean Gene. I mean, he hypes uh, Macho Man. He's like, we got Macho Man, we're, we're doing great. But he was basically out there so he could get interrupted. By Dr. Schuler. Yeah. Why they call him the doctor? We can only go. Because he's dissecting these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's the president of Turner Sports, so he's Eric's boss. Yeah. Come but as, as we'll learn later, not Eric's only boss. Hmm. Because it's not his... Yeah. <laughs> so comes out and pretty much says, um, just suspended. <laughs> That's kind of the big thing after Eric just got done talking about how amazing he's, he is. He's like, clearly, he was told, like, like a set of like maybe five lines that he has to say. Yeah. And he's like, just don't forget those lines. Don't forget those lines. And he's just like in the mirror practicing, washing his face. But one of the lines is so stupid. It was, it was, I don't even want to know if you, if you answer a telephone. It's like, wouldn't you want to know? <laughs> so you could fire him? Yeah. Like you're suspended. You can't do it. So do it? I'd be like, I want to know if you ever pick up a telephone. I don't even want to know if you came into work even after I suspended you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's like, I don't even want to know if you set up matches for the next pay-per-view. It's like, <laughs> no, you should. You should be actively petitioning against it. And then he follows up. I don't even want to hear a rumor about you being or using the men's bathroom. So where's he going to shit now, huh? <laughs> What's he going to do? Dr. Schuler. <laughs> but he stuck to the script. He's probably fucking nervous about it the entire time. Sweating bullets and shit. Yeah. Threw up mom spaghetti. <laughs> All that shit. Uh, from He's there, nervous, huh? <laughs> but on the surface, he looks calm and ready. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, jump over to the next match. We got Ultimate Dragon with Sonny Ono versus Eddie Guerrero. Sonny's outside kicking Eddie Guerrero, and Eddie no-sells it like a freaking beast. I thought he sold it. No, he started kicking him and he was like, What the fuck? <laughs> Chased him around real But bit. Ultimate Dragon kicks Eddie in the back and he goes, I wait! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> it must have been a hard kick, if anything. <laughs> He's like this. He's like, Holy shit! But this, this match is pretty quick because Eddie wins with a roll up, but he puts his. I mean, very sloppily and. I know that it's not like a thing that makes sound, but very loudly puts his feet on the ropes. <laughs> like you couldn't have like put his foot uh, feet on the ropes any harder. Like yeah. he's like almost like kicking the ropes. Like, <laughs> By the way, the rope break, rope break. The ref just didn't notice. Yeah, and so Eddie wins. <laughs> what, what was the point of him cheating to win that? I don't understand. Who Eddie? Yeah, cheating. Yeah. Oh, what? Or even, even if it was, it was meant to look like it was on accident. Like, what is the point? Dude, I mean, you're asking the wrong guy. Because he should he, be asking is suspended. He's the baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would call him on a phone. <laughs> 
<laughs> but someone might know that he's <laughs> called on the phone. He's definitely not in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell him, those are his two favorite spots, the phone and the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing? My two favorite spots, I can't use them. Um, yeah, I don't know what the hell that was about, but um, he says, last night, no, Monday night. <laughs> Uh, Shit. <laughs> he's talking about he, he he goes over how he's mad, he's mad with that uh, Dean Malenko is mad over. at him and he's I'm not the chair man. <laughs> and then Dean Malenko comes out and says something about a snow job. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't know. What he goes. I know what kind of guy you are. <laughs> goes, you lie. You cheat. And you stick. I wish. No, <laughs> he, he, they honestly look like they were. It, it was good in the sense that they were yelling at each other. Yeah. Because Mean Gene was out there and she's like, "Anyway, we're gonna have a commercial break." And they're like, "What? What? Is that what you think? Is that what you want?" I always lo- want to see what happens after these interactions. Like when they go to commercial, do they just like slowly walk away? <laughs> Yes, um, and I think they play that up at the end of their shows. Yeah, sometimes to positive effect, sometimes to negative effect. I'll see what you think at the end of this one. <laughs> uh, the next match was M Wall Street versus Scotty Riggs. Riggs. See, I put I put Ruse. Those are not G's. <laughs> Scotty Ruse. Scotty. Scotty Ruby Ruse. <laughs> Scotty Riggs is still coming out to American Males, which is the best part of this match. <laughs> it's probably the most cognizant part of this match. It was very average at best. And Wall Street is the jobber of the NWO. So. Yeah. And Scotty Riggs didn't beat him. It was, in fact, a DQ because Buff Bagwell, Buff, who's got the stuff and was formerly American Male, now identifies as whatever he wants, <laughs> uh, came out. Mr. Calf implant. <laughs> beat a... Uh, <laughs> Beat up Scotty Riggs, DQ at that point, no contest, I believe, right? Uh, no, I think it was a he, DQ, like he lost. Oh, well, so Scotty took the win, and, um, and then, at that point, Buff just flexed a bunch of times, and then, you know, it's like I'm Buff, I've got the stuff, and then <laughs> Wall Street's like, hey, me too, <laughs> and then they both like, <laughs> and I'm here as well, <laughs> and I'm here. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you handle the whole entire thing. You got this. Rowdy Piper comes out. This is so bad. I have this slated as the worst match. I don't know if it even is a match, but I have it slated as that. It might as well be. Um, uh, Rowdy is very surprised that, that Macho Man joined the NWO. Mm. And... Uh, He's talking trash. Obviously, at uh, the next pay per view, uncensored, they're putting all the titles on the line and some weird thing that I still don't understand. And he says, "Icon stands for I cower over nothing," which is a really bad use of that acronym. <laughs> he could have done so much better. I feel like he tried on that one too, and that makes it all the worse. I yeah, it like sounds he- like a word he would say. Feels like he was like, I'm, I'm gonna make that icon into something, mm. and then he, they're like, we got a couple writers that could. He's like, no, no, no I got it. <laughs> Say no more. I got this, <laughs> and then came up with that. Uh, so he hosts like a tryout for his team. Yeah, which is really counterintuitive because he's got like an entire locker room full of people that would probably love to compete. Yeah, and instead he's like, I'm gonna pick out like random people <laughs> off the street. Off the street. That might want to join my team instead of like professional wrestlers. They're trained to fight. Did you notice their clothing was like very similar <laughs> to the previous? <sighs> Blue jeans and boots, that's all okay, you're gonna this need. Was, <laughs> this was the most homoerotic thing I think I've ever seen. I wrote that down. <laughs> the first three guys were bu- like ridiculously buff dudes with jeans. No. Yeah, because the third guy got punched out. But the first two guys. Oh, the first, you said the first three guys. So It's, it's going to be the first three, but the first two that competed. The third guy came out to the ring uh, and then got knocked out by some boxer character. Oh, you're right. I'm dumb. See, yeah, it was going to be three guys. So I was like, there's six people. Why can't they count? <laughs> I can't count. It I'm was, the dumb. It was three. The first three of them were oiled up dudes in jeans. And Roddy Piper just 
spins around on top of their bodies. It was really the first two. And like spins around on their bodies and rubs them down. <laughs> it was like, what have you done, Roddy Piper? <laughs> what have you done? What are you doing? Um, you know, not what you've done. It was so awkward because, on, okay, the psychology of this is so weird. On one hand, you cheer for Roddy Piper, right? Because he's, the, I mean, but he's the hero guy. Mm. You're supposed to cheer for him. And the crowd is pretty pro Roddy Piper. And then on the other hand, he's like, all right, come down, let's fight, let's do the thing. But there's a heel and there's a baby face. And so the people he's fighting are kind of like heels. Because he's like opposed to them. Yeah. But he's also trying them out for his team. So you're, you're kind of like, oh, I hope he does well, though. Because <laughs> like, I want him to have a good team. Um... But then people are giving thumbs down, which, on everybody. which doesn't matter because right, and, and that's what I'm talking about on on like the psychology's off is because the people are like, well, thumbs down, like we want Roddy Piper, but Roddy Piper's trying out people to join his team, so the thumbs down doesn't even matter because he, he overrules he overrules it anyway. Uh, eventually, after the first two gayest people ever. <laughs> Uh, we get some boxer guy. We don't know their names. No, we don't. They just run down. He knocks down the, the third guy that was supposed to come out. Yeah. Also a muscled uh, Gene Ware. Uh, the second guy uh, was... You were saying something about him. Oh, he looks... I'm pretty confident he's Luther Reigns. Who okay. joined the WWF uh, in, a couple, in like four years, five he's, years. He's the, uh, he's the father of Roman Reigns, so... He is not. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, he's the cousin of the... Of no, 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 nothing you're saying is true. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, so yeah, the boxer guy comes out and knocks down that third guy and then gets in like a boxing match with Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper is like a, has some experience with boxing. I don't fucking know. Well, at WrestleMania, he boxed uh, Mr. T. Uh, dude, just keep going. <laughs> um, they had a weird, like two round boxing match and then he pulled him in for a third and that turned into like a wrestling match. Okay, no oh, a heat. wrestling show, imagine that. No heat. Very confusing uh, dynamic here. Uh, everyone gave him the thumbs down, but Roddy's like, I think he's pretty darn good. <laughs> so he let him win. Let him have no, it. fuck you guys. He's, he's, he's all right with me. <laughs> and then we get some bigger dude who's also like, he looked like Danny McBride <laughs> from Foot Fist Way. <laughs> and um, they wrestled? And he was throwing kicks like the whole time, like these roundhouse the kicks. Fucking those! Those are not roundhouses. Boy. They're fucking idiotic <laughs> kicks. They look so <laughs> shitty. They serve no purpose. It's like the easiest way to throw a kick and know you're never gonna hurt somebody <laughs> ever. Is what he was doing. Yeah, um, and that apparently impressed him as well. And so he said, "You're in as well." And then the sixth guy was John Tenta, huge, huge dude. He's really just hard to look at. He's fat. Not because of that. I think it's his face and his chest hair. Bad face, bad chest hair, bad everything. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then the, the, they double teamed him for a little bit, the, the other two dudes. Yeah. He survived. I don't know what was going on here. He just said, okay, you're in too. And so now he's got... <laughs> I think I... <laughs> Got like a little posse. It's like competition went on. He got more desperate. Is this it? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I gotta say something about these guys. Oh, and what he said was, the rain in Spain has fallen. <sighs> and then he said, NWO stands for no way out. Get your tickets here. <laughs> that, this was the, and this went on forever. This was on for like, I think close to uh, 20, 30 minutes. Don't watch this episode, by the way. <laughs> this show, <laughs> I think, is what we're getting to. Uh, thank God, our Lord and Savior, Rey Mysterio, comes in with a battle against JL. Justice League is wrestling <laughs> in. Um, my notes are really, thank God, Ray is here. <laughs> and uh, honestly speaking, this seemed like one of the better Lucha matches because they were meshing well. Yeah. There was a lot of situations where they would have to be very high risk, high reward. And it was paying off as far as to hitting with Frankensteiners or uh, Hurricane Ranas and whatnot. Uh, apparently, Prince IAK is also wrestling Ray at Uncensored. Yeah, good for him. Hopefully, Ray gets it back because, I mean, I think Ray would be a better gets champion. Gets it back. He never lost it. Didn't he? Ray... Prince IAK won it from William Regal. 
Steven Regal. Sorry. Oh yeah, he never he didn't win that other time when they wrestled, but they're they're gonna have a legit clean match. So it's just two baby faces that are like, I want to fight you, I want to fight you too. It's the Romeo and Juliet of WCW, getting ready to settle their disputes. And of course, uh, Ray wins with Springboard Hurricane Rana um, for the three count on this one. Talks to the camera. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm gonna get it back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Hey, that's all I need at that point. Um, yeah. Good for. Um. Next up, Medusa. Remember her? <laughs> nope. <laughs> she comes back. Uh, apparently, she. They haven't shown her in forever, or any women wrestlers for that matter. Exactly. I mean, I guess unless you count women and Jacqueline. They're not female wrestlers. <laughs> I mean, Jacqueline is trying her best, but she's not. She's not a wrestler. What? Are you crazy? Not now. Oh, all right. She's got to gear up towards it, man. <clears throat> uh, she talks about how she threw. She threw. She threw. <laughs> she threw the uh, another world class wrestling organization's belt into the garbage. Yeah, some other promotion. That's WWF's belt. <laughs> Not anymore, brother. <laughs> So uh, she ran with it, threw it in the trash. That's probably what inspired uh, Vince to just be like, it's never going to happen again. So way to go, Alundra Blaze. You screwed Brett. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, and then Luna Vachon just comes out. Yeah. In fact, Medusa's like, I heard Luna's here or something like that. Yeah. Like, and then Luna jumps I out. I wonder when Luna's coming out here. <laughs> and then Luna, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> they do a quick little wrestle. There's actually a, a point where uh, Medusa's actually hanging on the um, on the railing. Because this is all outside the ring. And me and June's like, oh shit. <laughs> so he backs up. And then she has her, her hand right here. And Luna Vachon... Uh, goes for a DDT and pulls her head down, but she still grabs onto the uh, the what's called the rail like, and it just looked really painful the way it was because she literally did she did it and she was like, ah, oh, look in vain. And I'm like, oh, girl, stop. So hopefully they work out their kinks whenever their match is ever. ever. Next, we go over to the uh, the NWO coming out to the ring. This is the whole world. In their hands, <laughs> we got the whole copyright on our channel. Um, uh, Sting is in the back, <laughs> just looking you, like he's you. <laughs> looking so depressed. <laughs> we were making jokes. Is this really what they want to do with Sting? I so it's I know for a fact this does not go on forever. Um, but I can tell you that <laughs> we were cracking up, uh, we were making jokes about the music that he's like listening <laughs> all around me. <laughs> he just looks sad. He just looks like he needs a hug. There's a lot of times where he's in the frame, but in the foreground is, uh, you know, another NWO member. And he's actually legitimately like looking down, like not like down as in I'm playing the role, uh, the role of the crow, pretty much, but more of what the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> he does not look happy. Hulk Hogan comes out and then hits us with the well, you know, uh, brother, and then Macho comes out, yeah, and then that's I literally wrote Hulk being Hulk, Macho being Macho, and lastly, what's the <laughs> point? <laughs> um, Eric. Eric knows Ted, Ted Turner, so he's not suspended. Mm. He was earlier, and then now he is not. According to this nothing. storytelling, folks. Yeah. This is how you know it's good. Conflict it's... resolution by the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. He says, you're suspended. He says, no, I'm not. Ted Sanchez. <laughs> That's I'm it. I'm going to get my dad. <laughs> no, I'm not. And then. Credits begin rolling. Yeah. <laughs> I played you, sucker. <laughs> and then NWO is going to beat Piper. Again, what's the point? Comes back in the play. Ironically, though, that wasn't the last part of the show. The last part of the show was the Steiners versus Lex and Giant, which I was actually looking forward to this match. Same. Uh, we got Rick and Lex starting first. And there's actually, it was actually a pretty darn decent match for yeah. what it was. It's like four minutes or something. Scott is huge. <laughs> huge. He just gets bigger and bigger as the day is going. He's a grown boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't wait till he shaves that shit off and comes big pop a pop. 
I'm waiting. It's going to be fucking awesome. But speaking of fucking, <laughs> Sky is already showing signs of cracking. <laughs> Literally looks at, at uh, Giant and says, fuck you. <laughs> What a champion! Oh man, I love it. But uh, NWO comes out, and spoils it, as pretty, they as they do, and then the Piper and his new cronies come out. God. And they all have like a little fight in the middle of the ring. Should not even be there. Should not even be there. <laughs> I think what they're gonna try and push at this point is like Piper's new team is gonna be the Steiners. Oh, I hope. I hope. I hope. Or those guys, the other guys he's with, are going to get jobbed out to be like, oh, NWO's attacking. It's turned into more of a gang war sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's Nitro. <laughs> Raw! <laughs> We're in Berlin, Germany. I thought this show was going to be terrible. Yeah. From what I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, I do not think that it was terrible. Uh, again, we're March 3rd, 1997. The story here is we're going to crown a European title. They've had uh, they've had uh, house shows yeah. as like the the, the build up preliminaries to the tournament. Yeah, and the two that are here now are ironically the Bulldog, British Bulldog that is, mm. and Owen Hart, who are tag team champions. Yep, getting ready to face off against each other for the first ever European battle. And they're not without their own uh, controversy and their own issues. So, kind of, it's not, it's not like a blow-off match, because, like, they've been hinting that they're breaking up and everything, but they haven't broken up. Yeah. And then they have Facebook this, status. Then they have this match. At first, I was kind of upset about it, and now I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what, maybe this just adds to their riff, and then they blow up eventually. Mm. But I guess we'll see how it handles it. It's like the superpowers exploding. <laughs> anyway, before we get there, we've got a series of other matches to get through. Yep. Starting us off right, uh, well, wrong. Honky Tonk makes his way down the stage, gets tugged down pretty hard. That's going to be a trick. <laughs> <laughs> because the German audience... They're tuggers. They love wrestling. And some of, some of those are just flat-out girls that are like, I've never seen six-packs in my life. I want to fuck you. <laughs> Honky Tonk is the first victim. Uh, gets tugged a little bit, makes his way to the arena, finally goes, woo! And then uh, we're underway. First match of the night, Triple H versus Bret Hart. Woo! Solid. I'm immediately looking for this. Solid, players. solid card. Dude, this card is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and good match. Uh, although Bret Hart also gets pulled into the audience. Oh, dude. He's like, leave me alone. I'm sorry that you're touching me. <laughs> it's my mistake that I'm this good looking. <laughs> I forgot why I wrote this, but Honky Tonk is an idiot is what I put. Um, you were saying that... Oh, shoot. I know why you said that. <laughs> Tonk is an idiot. Oh, he was saying that... Because they were... Something about the audience was chanting, like, USA or... That was something. I can't remember. It was something about the audience. Oh, no, that was the match with Eddie Guerrero and Ultimate Dragon. No, it was something with this... WCW. <laughs> USA! <laughs> what the fuck? It was something with this one, but I don't remember exactly. Fuck me. Um, somebody threw a, a teddy bear into the ring and Triple H dropped oh, it. Oh, gosh, it's just glorious. And, and they booed him for it. Like, what else is he going to do? <laughs> well, I'm trying to put on a show here. Shut the fuck up. Don't but that's, shit. That's cool. The audience was, like, playing with the whole heel and just wanted to see what he would do. And he, you know, did it appropriately. He did do it appropriately. It was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Stone Cold enters the arena. And Triple H kind of dominates the match. Yeah. Series of illegal moves, apparently. <laughs> Whatever. Honk Tonk's a fucking idiot. Um, that's not why I said it. I just think he's an idiot. <laughs> uh, we get an armbar takedown by Triple H uh, from an Irish whip, I believe. Um, and then, of course, there's a bit of a submission uh, going on. And, and Triple H does that thing. He usually does it. It's like an Indian scorp some kind of weird lock, death lock or something, where yeah. you get your legs in like a... A certain position on their their legs, and then you jump jump backwards. Mm -hmm. But he did it in, interestingly to his arm. To his arm, he fold his arm like that and did it, which was yeah unique. He bows, plays it up for the audience, and then crank, cranks that shit. Um, uh, it's announced that Bret Hart will be facing Steve Austin in a submission match. Yeah, at WrestleMania, which Steve Austin has never um, shown 
to be was never shown to be using submissions very often, except for he's the sleep. Yeah, which is which isn't really a submission, I guess. Which is hilarious because he even mentions it. And we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, of course, uh, Brett Irish whips at Triple H into a turnbuckle, and he does his classic. I front flip on the turnbuckle now, and now I've caught myself. My leg is caught. And I'm unconscious or something because I'm not even trying to stop you. Um, with Brett coming in, Brett starts you know stomping mainly on his face and on his chest area. Uh, at that point, ref comes over and he goes, "Bitch!" <laughs> Pushes the ref out of the way, gets automatically DQ'd as a result. China comes in to protect her man. Um, doesn't say anything. Short of reminds me of the Shockmaster because he does this. <laughs> and then uh, from there, security starts to come up. Gets her, the thing's DQ'd. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, Bret Hart calmed down real fucking quick. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Must be tempered. You gotta got hit me with your. Um, so she gets escorted out at that point, and for the first time, we're starting to see the makings of a relationship with, uh, with China going, uh, you know, getting taken away, and I guess Triple H was looking at her back muscles and was just like, damn. <laughs> oh. Pushes the the uh, the security guards off and goes, let her go. <laughs> She's let her go. She's the love of my life. Yeah, at least until Stoney. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Vader versus The Rock for the Intercontinental Championship. Mm. Vader beat him during the tournament for the European Championship. Yep. Um... This is pretty good. Vader does a sit down on Rocky. You don't usually see that connect. connect. Yeah, Rocky was going for uh, sunset um, flip. Yeah, it didn't work out. Mm -mm. And I don't even think Vader even protected it because he's supposed to land with sort of his heels to like lessen the blow. Yeah. Nah, man. <laughs> he kicked his legs out. He kicked his legs out. And then landed on Rocky. <laughs> After Rocky got done coughing up blood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the match continued. <laughs> and Vader does a cool leg submission on the calf, mm -hmm. which you don't really see that that often, but it, it makes sense. Like, I've done that before. It's just like, you, yeah, you get it, and you, you get your freaking huge meaty thigh, because Vader's freaking huge. He just pushes his calf over it. Mm -hmm. that, that shit hurts. Um, Rocky hits his pretty cool DDT. He's famous for that one. Yeah. And towards the end of the match, uh, Vader's mask comes off. You don't usually see that. Yeah, man. When Luke fights him enough times, his mask is slowly gonna come off. And I think I swear that that's why they called him Vader, right? It, it had to have been. <laughs> Either way, well, Vader means father in German, so maybe they're like, ah, oh, da, Schugelheimen, or whatever they say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we get an interference with mankind. Hits Rocky with the urn. Why? No one knows. Uh, I think Mankind at this point is probably trying to be like, we're free and Jay. let me help. And he's like, the ref is right there! Like, you could tell that Vader was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Little bit disgruntled at that point. But uh, Vader, pissed off, keeps wrestling at this point to, to try and dethrone Rocky. But um, they get split up by a bunch of reps. The match is called off. DQ. Yep. No contest. Next up, the Sultan... Versus Flash Funk. Sultan looks so goofy. He's a character from three years ago. That's what he looks like. Mm -hmm. He's got the curly shoes. <laughs> yeah, he does, yeah. Oh my god. What were they thinking? Well, I um, Jinder Mahal was champion once, so. <laughs> WWE champion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll get there. Stick with us. <laughs> crowd is still pulling these wrestlers, I tell you what. Yeah. Um, the only thing, I mean, this is okay, but the only the only thing that's really notice, notable is that Flash Funk seemed to hit his head on a Hurricane Rana. Or maybe his neck. Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, his neck. Yo, dude, hard. It was hard. I was just like, ooh, ooh. And then, like, legit, you could see him. He was just like... like uh, but he still managed to hit that moonsault. Yeah, and then hold his neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's just like, ay! It, it, it reminds me of Edge when he would spear and then immediately hold his neck afterwards. It's just like, yeah, take it easy, Flash. Your hose ain't with you this week, so <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to massage you back to perfect health, man. Sultan hits a pretty cool face buster and then turns it into a camel clutch for the win. FTW. We move over to... We can talk about that Stone Cold. Stone Cold, who... Uh, 
really just recap. Yeah. His stuff, which usually we don't talk about recaps, but this was freaking awesome. No, this wasn't the promo. Right, right. This one's just him, like, I guess he... From, like, last year. Dealing with the police. And then he's like, I'm a star, don't you touch me. <laughs> but they, they, he's, like, talking about the Dunkin' Donuts. Like, yeah, he Dunkin' Donuts was two blocks that way. <laughs> yeah, hang a left. He'll be there in no time. And it's, he just knows how to run over people with his dialogue. <laughs> Uh, and then we jump over to Sid, Psycho Sid, with an S, by the way. I mean, you're spelling it wrong if it's with a P. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, he's just being Sid. He calls himself the master of the universe. Do the they really not spell it with a P? Yeah, it's with an S. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, found, I looked at that last week, and I was like... I've been using it with a P this whole time. Me, too. And then, look, I had to switch it up. Psycho. Psycho <laughs> Sid. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, he just has a promo where he's talking about he's the master universe in the world. No one fucking cares. But, you know what everyone cares about? Ahmed Johnson? Good old Ahmed Johnson. Guess what? I can make out most of the words this time. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed Johnson comes out. You want me? You got me. I'll fight you in this street match, but I won't be alone. Okay. And then he goes, Farouk is going down and starts a chant. You're Literally going on... down. Yeah. You're going down. Literally on the first... Uh, uh, chant of it, people are already saying you're going down. So it, it sounds like they might have practiced. <laughs> oh. With the audience. Or, or the German uh, translator would be like, hey man, tell me. Well, this one wasn't live, was it? Good point. So they may have just waited, like done it a couple times until it caught on, and then yeah. that's when they. You're going down, huh? <laughs> um, mankind versus Psycho Sid for the WWF Championship. Why? <laughs> Mankind. I don't know why he earned it, but Mankind is speaking German. And, he, uh... He was reading German, too, by the way. Sounded like he was reading it. Yeah, no, like, he he would do this. The camera's facing this way. He goes... Zum, 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 I was like, bro, don't be that guy. Uh, Stone Cold is doing the promo. He's mad about Bret Hart. What, el what else is new? What else is new? Um... Uh, <clears throat> Psycho Sid chases away Paul Bear, who keeps trying to inter interfere with this match. <laughs> Were you about to hit me, motherfucker? They've got a pretty good match going on. Manable Claw and Sid. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Tries to get a pin on him for it. Doesn't work out. That's like the, one of the weirdest moves. That could either be a submission or it could be a pin. Yes. If you think about it, and you're just like, alright, whatever. <laughs> sure, why not? But... Either way. And I guess if you have your hand over them, it's like, a, especially if you get your elbow on their chest or something, yeah. I guess that's a pin. That's, that's the that's a snake attack. That's a Jake the Snake different. Right? <laughs> 22 stings right to you. <laughs> um, yeah, Sid fights out. Mankind accidentally hits Paul Bearer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sid hits Choke Slam, and then he hits the Power Bomb, and then wins. It's a really painful looking Power Bomb. Yeah, well, Mankind's a big boy, so you got to do what you can't. You got to do. You got to do what you got to do. And Sid is a very strong individual. <laughs> I'm toting him as the strongest person in the industry at this time. <laughs> he's definitely he's surprisingly lean. Incredibly, like it's like he like most people you see at that size, they don't care at that point. Yeah, like they usually and, and this business, they're, Ahmed Johnson. <laughs> like yeah, they're just like I'm just gonna go for beef and just shoot for it. He it's is like he, not only is Sid like huge. Yeah. But he's freaking cut. He might be the most cut person on the freaking roster. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? And, you know, it's hilarious. It's like, you look at Scott Steiner, and then you're just like, no, nah, bro. <laughs> That's a cool trick you got there, but uh, <laughs> got got a uh, psycho guy over here on my end. Jesus. Crazy. Uh, we jump over to Stone Cold, cutting just a immaculate promo. It's always nice hearing Stone Cold, and me not growing up, watching him. And, you know, dealing with WCW, and they fumbled over their shit all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm always, my butt's always clenched, because I'm just like, oh, don't mess it up, don't mess it up. Like, Brett messed up the, before he went out to fight Triple H. I'm going to do what I did to Triple H, what I'm going to do to Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then made his, way, Stone Cold. made his way to the ring and got freaking grabbed. Um... Yeah, Stone Cold's promo was was amazing, mm. and he 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 said like why 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 haven't you gotten over basically in in whatever way the Vince asked. Yeah, and and he was like, because I'm not like, what did he say? Oh, why are you so petty? 
Yeah, yeah. And then he goes, um, you treat me like a dog and you expect me to smile? <laughs> yeah. It's just like... And he said, you're looking like a jackass. <laughs> yeah, you remind me of a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then that's it. And to be honest with you, the, 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 we're getting those... We're getting those um, those building blocks for that attitude era coming up, so this is definitely nice to see. And then, wow, we close the show with the worst match on the card. Oh god, <laughs> with Owen Hart and the British Bulldog for the new European Championship. This match was awesome. Uh, of course, there's history between the two, they're the current tag team champions, and they've had a couple issues in the past month, mm. maybe more than a month or two. Since the Royal Rumble, really. It's like the Jeff Jarrett and Mongo thing, but done better. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, what what makes this amazing as well is there's two things, really. Um, they're both very good wrestlers. Specifically Owen Hart. Bulldog is also a very good wrestler, but Owen Hart is a phenomenal wrestler. Mm -hmm. And then, two, they both know each other really, really well. So usually like if you know somebody well you can have a good match with them is what they say. Mm. Um not only that do they have that advantage, but they're also both really good. Uh they start out as like a very pure wrestling competition and then kind of transition into like a you know a more WWF style Your typical suplex yeah. do this yada, Suplex yada. City big big Um never this isn't really a spot fest kind of match. There's there not, there kinda were. Some. There were some. Like, it was nice seeing, um, we're, we're, when we were talking about in the middle of the match, it's just like, this is how the progression of wrestling should be going, or should have gone uh, to where it's at, like, now in, like, 2019. Um, it was just solid. It, it had, it was pleasant surprises every time there was something more acrobatic. Like, there was a lot of initial, um... You know, submissions and reversals and things like that. And even some ways you don't really see people getting out of submissions. Yeah. Like what they were doing. That's that's trailblazing for sure. And then jumping over to, I forgot what it was, but Owen has Bulldog's hand, runs, jumps up onto the, uh, the ropes, and is like no balancing or anything like that needed. Yeah. Already has his balance at that point. You're just like, holy shit, like these guys. And then he does like a springboard, but not on his feet. Like on his legs. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. to a backflip. To a backflip to reverse a freaking... What the fuck? <laughs> like, what are you guys doing? You're killing it. And you're making the rest of us look bad. <laughs> you know, if anything, the only two guys... And the worst part about the whole thing is these are the only two guys that you can put in a match because, you know, we, we'll talk about this stuff you know, behind the scenes. WCW has a lot more technical wrestlers. You got your Deans. You got all these other guys. And um, these two guys, because they're tagged... All the time, uh, are, you're not. You're only gonna get one match, and it's gonna be with both of them, and it's gonna be against the what the Lafuria and La, whatever. Fun. Yeah, the two French dudes, and you're just like, that's it. And then you see their true talent, and you're just like, I want uh, more of that. Blew it. It, it was something lot. else. Yeah, very um, nimble. Uh, Owen fakes an injury at one point. Yeah. To his leg, and then that helps him capitalize uh, on Bulldog, which. He's Owen Hart is the the heel of the match, but they're still both very much very liked. Yeah, there's a little bit of a respect game. They throw each other out of the rings, uh, uh, out of the ring each at different times, and they hold the 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 ropes open for each other to come back in. Yeah, um, Owen does try the feet on the rope trick, mm -hmm. which is definitely the heel for the pin maneuver. Um, fails obviously. Mm. Uh, Bulldog counters a superplex into a crossbody, which. Looked a little unusual, but... Looked unusual, but it's an unusual move, you know. I can give it up to that. It happens. Uh, still hit it. It was good. Owen uses a sharpshooter on Bulldog. But Davy Boy just won't quit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> uh, there's some right. reversals. It almost looked like a tombstone for a second. Into a power slam from mm. Bulldog to Owen Hart. And then they do one last little reversal thingy and turn it. Owen Hart goes for, I think, a small package. Mm -hmm. And Bulldog reverses that into a pin of his own and wins. He's the new and first European champion. And the only European that was wrestling. <laughs> I think, actually. Yeah, yeah, because Owen's Canadian. Yeah. So, so yeah, he was the, he was the European. He's practically American. <laughs> 
<laughs> so at this point, we end the match with probably, well, the best match of the night, without a doubt. Oh, without a doubt. Um, do we have a best match for WCW? I don't. I have the worst match. It's Roddy Piper. <laughs> um, best match for WCW would have to be the Ray one. Ray versus JL. Oh, that was too simple though. Maybe the Eddie uh, Guerrero one. Eddie Guerrero versus Ultimate Dragon. I mean, but that's like a default thing. It's not even like, oh, because it was just a standout. There really wasn't that many good matches. Most of them ended in, well, no, Mike Enos. Mm -hmm. That was a win. Uh, DDP, that's a jobber. Juventude, Ray is a jobber. Ray Mendoza. Um, and the, the Mongo thing was just to push a storyline, so we're not really worried about that. As far as pure talent-wise... It's either Eddie and Ultimate Dragon or the Ray one. Yeah. They're both short. They're both short. Which is kind of depressing. Um, and then the worst match for me, I was actually going to go with, um, where the fuck is it? Uh, Wall Street and Scotty Riggs. Um, just to get some variety. Okay. Because, uh, to be honest, it's a bullshit-ass match. And <laughs> they're not even building to anything. It is really just one of those pointless matches. Unless they... That was... W WCW this, this night was a lot of matches that there's no point to it. There was no point. There was a lot of times they came out and there was no point, too. Yeah. Um, so that's very unfortunate. The winner of this week is going to be Raw. For sure. Just Which is weird because I, I had my sights so low. Yeah. Especially after the last one. Oh, I had my sights so low for this Thank Raw. God they bounced back. The worst part about Raw, though, was the, um, the phone conversations where they were like, Yeah, it was a great, you know, uh, freaking Paul E. Dangerous comes out or uh, is, is on a call and he's pretty much talking about how... Oh, thank you for letting our athletes showcase them, their talent. And I was just like, and they showed the recaps. And no, no, they're fucking horrible. I wasn't a. St I don't. I no, <laughs> no, no, no. God, no. It's. It just wasn't that good. But um, this one, it was more uh, put together. You can argue it had more of its stars, uh, more of the mainstay stars in this case, and. And that's very true, but it's it was just so much nice and nicer to see that. So yeah, we got ourselves a win for Raw for for once. We should probably do a tally on these. We should we'll get that going. We'll get that going. Anyway, I'm Spencer. And I'm JD. And this is the, the heel, heel turn. turn. Thanks for watching.